I am Noelle Marie Plonsky, a fifth year PhD candidate in biomedical sciences at Kent State University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my recent COVID project, mapping RNA editing patterns during coronavirus infection using Gutman scaling. As we all have gotten an impromptu virology education during the pandemic, you may know that coronaviruses are quite a large family of respiratory viruses. Some are only found in the animal populations. Some members cause the common cold. Then the more dangerous SARS-CoV-1, which emerged in 2003, caused over 8,000 infections, of which 775 people died. Luckily, at that time, we were able to contain this pandemic relatively quickly. Another member of the family, MERS, emerged in 2009, also with relatively small spread, although the World, World Health Organization keeps monitoring for future outbreaks. Then the latest SARS-CoV-2 member appeared in late 2019, resulting in a worldwide pandemic where there are over 3 million deaths so far. Most of the SARS-CoV-2 studies focus on studying the virus itself to try and understand how infections proceed in cells and how that changes the virus. We instead focus more on the dynamic host changes as a result of the infection, more specifically thinking about the immune reaction to each virus, which triggers its own set of unique symptoms. Here we show the most common symptoms of each viral infection. At the top, there are a constellation of symptoms both SARS-CoV-1 and 2 have in common, suggesting a similar mechanism of action behind some of the symptoms, including headaches and confusion. Our central hypothesis is the common mechanisms behind seemingly unexplained symptoms, such as neurological symptoms, is that the viral infections activate the innate immune response, which alters RNA editing patterns, causing a wide array of physiological symptoms. RNA editing plays a central role in brain development, hematopoiesis, and generalized transcriptome diversity. Additionally, RNA editing is responsible for fighting viral infections by editing viral RNA with one isoform of adenosine deanamase acting on RNA, ADR1P150, which is activated by the innate immune response. However, an unintended consequence of ADR activation is that it alters the nuances of editing patterns that normally occur in the host transcriptome. The example shown here, GRIA2, a glutamate receptor, has acute R amino acid change, where editing is responsible for blocking calcium flow through the channel, making the receptor functional. So how do we study changes in ADR editing patterns? Here, we used a publicly available RNA sequencing data set from the SRI database that had infected lung, intestinal, and lymph node cell lines that were infected with SARS-CoV-1 or 2. We used a tool we developed in our lab called AID, which allows us to combine traditional RNA-seq expression analysis with downstream analysis of RNA editing patterns. In addition to global editing landscapes, we also examined changes at the list of experimentally confirmed editing sites called the excitome. These editing sites are involved in many biological pathways, including metabolic and cellular processes and signaling. Because ADAR editing is highly complex and involves many thousands of events, most of which occur in non-coding regions, to reduce the complex multidimensional aspects of editing patterns, we use Gutman scaling applied to the excitome sites. That reduces complexity of the data to a single dimension. By assigning each sample a score and then each editing site a hierarchical rank order, the example shown here shows how Gutman scaling will order the questions in chronological order, similar to how it will order editing sites. Then the samples are assigned a score shown here in the last column based on the editing status. Our results show that indeed coronaviral infections activate ADARs. Notably though, we observe differential expression of ADAR 1P150 between the two viruses. We are going to focus on the long cell line shown in the middle column and the 12 hour shown in the middle row and 24 hour shown in the bottom row host infection time points. As expected, MOC shown in red has lower expression than either SARS-CoV-1 shown in blue or SARS-CoV-2 shown in purple. This is especially pronounced in the 24 hour post infection time point. Interestingly, but not entirely unexpected, 
we observed that global ADAR editing patterns remained only slightly changed in most conditions and time points, likely due to inclusion of editing in the entire transcriptome, including those non-coding regions. However, when we zoom in on the 24-hour post infection for both intestinal cells and lung cells, we do see a decrease in global editing. Because the expression of ADAR1 P150 is increased, yet global editing is unchanged or decreased, this suggests that this editing process is more complicated than originally simplistically imagined. To determine how changes in ADAR1 P150 expression play a role in changes in editing patterns we observed, we examine correlations between different measures of ADAR expression and editing levels and impact on protein functions, including P150 shown in green, as well as other members of the ADAR family we are not going to discuss today. When we look at SARS-CoV-1 in the lung cell line, we see strong negative correlation with global editing, but a strong positive correlation with other measures of impact on protein structure and function. We see the same pattern in SARS-CoV-2, but with more moderate strength correlations. The opposite pattern is seen in intestinal cells. This suggests redirection of editing from the normal editing patterns that is tissue and infection specific, warranting more investigation about the interaction of ADARs during infections. To classify samples into those with high editing compared to those with low editing in the excitome sites, we use Gutman scale ass assigned scores. Here, we note that overall, there's not much difference between scores in any cell line. However, when looking at the lung cell line, four hours post-infection, there are higher scores indicating more editing. But by 12 hours post-infection, there are decreased scores indicating decreased editing. Furthermore, by 24 hours post-infection, there is no change in scores. This suggests that ADAR editing, in addition to being tissue specific, is also a time dependent dynamic process. Next, we use the hierarchical rank order given by Gutman scaling to determine change in rank by one, two, three, four, or five ranks in just the long cell line. Changes in rank indicate changes in editing status. Looking at the top row, which shows a downward shift in rank, we see in the first column, four hours post SARS-CoV-1 infection, shown in blue, half the sites have no change in rank and half the sites have a downward shift by five ranks. However, when looking at the bottom row, which shows upward shift in editing status, there is an increase in rank 24 hours post SARS-CoV-1 infection. On the other hand, SARS-CoV-2, shown in red, has increases in editing rank at 4, 12, and 24 hours post-infection. However, some editing sites decrease by five ranks at 12 hours post-infection, similar to the scores assigned by Gutman. This again demonstrates that ADAR editing is a time, tissue, and infection dependent process. Here, we look at all the editing site status in the excitome. We find most editing sites are unique to the time point or infection status, meaning that they may, may be stochastic. But we do find three sites edited in both SARS-CoV-1 and 2, four hours post-infection. These are BLCAP, CREB1, and FBXL6. Then we found two more that are common between all of the conditions, ACP1 and SRP9. All five of these shared sites can serve as potential biomarkers that need to be studied further to determine their role in the pathology of SARS infections. Overall, we found increases in ADAR1 P150 expression that are negatively correlated with the amount of global editing, but a positive correlation with the impact on protein structure and function, suggesting the subtle nuances of ADAR editing make it much more complicated than we originally anticipated. Gutman scaling allows for us to identify five genes that may serve as potential biomarkers of the infection severity. Of these, ACP1 is a protein responsible for holding cells together. And if the editing changes how ACP1 functions in the lungs, this can cause severe damage and make it hard to breathe. Likewise, functional changes due to editing and CREB1 and SRP9 may affect overall gene expression regulation 
and how proteins get shuttled around the cell. If the proteins don't get where they need or they're not made at all, this can lead to a myriad of symptoms. Likewise, BLCAP and FBXL6 are important for the cell cycle, and so their dysregulation may have far-reaching consequences as well. Though the study is limited by the use of cell lines and quality and depth of coverage of sequencing data, we were still able to detect changes in editing patterns. So in the future, we would like to use samples directly from patients like blood or bronchial lavage, while also obtaining age, biological sex, and other phenotypic information. We will then combine this with machine learning models to better predict diagnostic, prognostic, and therapeutic biomarkers. Additionally, we would like to look at editing in the brain during and post-infection status to explore mechanisms of neurological symptoms. I would like to thank everyone in my lab and collaborators um, and other professors at Kent State and then all of the funding uh, sources shown here. Um, and then if you have any questions, um, I'd like to thank you for listening. <laughs>